to earn your property adjuster certificate recognized by a growing list of IA firms and get everything you need to get started as an independent property adjuster, go to adjustertv.com slash path. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to keep from getting zinged in your coverage analysis by learning all about special limits. Starting now. This is Adjuster TV. Hey, it's Matt here with Adjuster TV and for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now click on the bell notification so you'll never miss a video. Want to know how you can survive your first ever storm deployment? Watch the How to Survive Your First Storm Deployment webinar. Register for free at adjustertv.com slash thrive. And thanks to Brian from YouTube who says, I met Matt at the 2019 NACA conference along with a host of other great people that shared very beneficial opportunities to be successful in the IA industry. The information gained from Adjuster TV has been very beneficial and reinforces what I know to be true throughout my six years of adjusting experience. The stop multitasking tip and turn off all distractions was great and has made me a faster and a better adjuster. Can't wait to catch more videos. Dude, thank you so much for watching, Brian. I really appreciate that. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but policy is probably one of the least sexy things about handling claims. Construction, yeah. Scoping, definitely. Investigating and inspecting houses and buildings, super fun. Digging through the policy to figure out if you can pay for something or not, and if so, by how much, and once you figure that out, you have to dig around some more to see if it's replacement cost or not. I mean, ugh. No, but you gotta know it. Along with your construction and building restoration knowledge, policy is your most important skill as an adjuster. Without policy knowledge, you're a contractor. Nothing wrong with that, of course. Having a solid grasp of how a policy goes together and where to find stuff is critical for your success, not only in the accuracy and completeness of your claim file, but also in your speed. After all, we're not getting paid by the hour. So every minute of every day is an opportunity. It's a chance to maximize your earnings. So every minute you spend scratching your head while you thumb through an HO5 is money just flying out of your pocket. But you can't wing it either, right? So you must be accurate and make the right call. What, if, what happens if you don't make the right call? You'll get the file sent back to you for corrections and then that's gonna take far longer than if you just spent an extra few minutes making sure you were making the right call. Never mind that if you say something isn't covered and it is, you're gonna have to make a phone call, albeit not necessarily a bad one. But what if you said something is covered and it turns out that it's not? Well, that can cause all kinds of problems. So you've got to be spot on with your coverage analysis. Insurance policies are a deep topic and we could be here for hours talking about this stuff. But in today's video, we're gonna talk specifically about special limits. What are special limits? So in regular homeowners policies, most structural and personal property items are covered if the loss or the peril is covered, except when they're not, or except when they are, but only up to a certain point. So let's just run through some examples of special limits of liability so that you can understand what I'm talking about. Money, didn't think of that one, did you? If Mrs. Insured's purse was sitting on the end of the bed when they ran out of the burning house, everything in her purse, including her purse, is covered. And just as an aside, this alone should tell you how time-consuming fires can be. Everything is ruined in a fire, even little things like paper clips, shaving cream and socks. Is the money in her wallet covered? Yes, actually it is. But let's take a look under special limits in our sample HO5. So here we see that yes, money is covered up to $200. And not just cash, but all of these other things. Banknotes, bullion, gold, other than goldware, silver, other than silverware, platinum, other than platinumware, coins, metals, script, whatever that is, store value cards and smart cards, $200. So why 200, why 200 bucks? Well, not that most people would lie or commit fraud, but somebody could say, oh geez, my aunt had just given me 25,000 in cash for my birthday and it was just sitting right there on the, you know, the divan and I, you know, it's burned up. I tell you, oh, well, good thing I got some insurance, right? Insurance companies are not going to provide that kind of temptation to people. So 200 bucks it is. So let's see, what's one that can get you in trouble and that is super common. Ah, yes, here it is, trailers. Okay, so we got $1,500 on trailers or semi-trailers not used with watercraft of all types. So, okay, cool. Looks like this doesn't include the trailer that goes with my John boat. Oh, well, right above that, we've got this special limit. $1,500 limit on watercraft of all types, including their trailers, furnishings, equipment, 
and outboard engines or motors. Trailers are one of the biggest special limit situations you're going to come across as a cat property adjuster. If the trailer is not otherwise covered under its own policy, and most nice trailers that an insured owns will likely be covered separately, then all you can give them is 1500 bucks. The most typical situation is when an insured has a metal enclosed cargo trailer or pop-up camper. The metal top and maybe one or more sides is all banged up from hail and a tail light or two is smashed out. So what do you do? Can that be repaired? Maybe, probably, maybe not. But your goal is to give them a fair settlement for that, which means you'll want to give them as much as possible within the constraints of the policy and whatever constitutes a reasonable and customary repair for the trailer. So if reskinning the trailer is the right repair, you should be able to get a square foot price from your manager who will have gotten it from the carrier most likely. Otherwise, you can reach out to a local or regional RV or motorhome body shop and ask them. It could be 15 to $25 per square foot or more to reskin that trailer. So if it's a 20 foot trailer and it's seven and a half feet wide and you're doing the roof and one side, we'll say it's a five foot high uh, cargo trailer, then that's what? So that's 240, we'll say 240 square feet at $20 a square foot, you're looking at about 4,800 bucks to repair that trailer. I've never had a store manager suggest that I do PDR on a trailer like this. It's almost always a reskin price. So anyway, Clearly, that's more than the special limit for trailers under this policy. This particular scenario presents a bit of an opportunity to help out the homeowner if you're paying attention. So if the insured has a $1,000 deductible, most carriers will allow you to apply the insured's deductible to any amounts that exceed a policy limit, which this is a special policy limit, right? You've probably heard of this uh, called absorbing the deductible. Either way, it's a little bit of a help to the insured. If applying the deductible to the amount exceeding policy limits does not make sense to you, and I do not feel bad about this because this is confusing, comment below with some question marks and I'll work on creating a much more detailed video about absorbing deductibles. But we're talking about special limits. I kind of got off a little bit of a, a tangent there. So, okay, so what's one more we can talk about? I mean, you've got firearms. There only seems to be a special limit if the cause of loss is theft misplacing or losing of firearms, which is interesting. Yeah, I can't seem to find my $12,000 custom bird shotgun. Most people with expensive firearms are going to insure those items separately. So not common. They have to have some documentation that they actually had that firearm before you can pay for it. And then of course, obviously we have hollow wear in there, you know. Let's let this last example show how truly convoluted a homeowner's policy can be. And this is why having a solid understanding of the policy is pretty important to your success as an adjuster. We're gonna go back to trailers. So we've got up to $1,500 limited coverage for losses to trailers, right? It doesn't list any perils like firearms does. So we assume that anything that's otherwise covered, covered will be covered for our trailer up to that limit. You probably know by now that your car, you know, the one that you take to work, you drive to the grocery store or whatever, uh, that's not covered under your homeowner's policy in any way. And we can see right here under property not covered, right after special limits, little letter C. But if we jump back to the beginning of the policy to the definition section and look at motor vehicles to see just exactly what the policy considers a motor vehicle, we're gonna see little letter A a self-propelled land or amphibious vehicle, or little letter B, any trailer or semi-trailer which is being carried on, towed by, or hitched for towing by a vehicle described in little letter A above. Huh, that's gonna be a problem. So what this is saying is that trailers are covered up to $1,500 unless they're attached to a vehicle in some way, in which case, there's no coverage at all. So if you're insured had their cargo trailer attached to their minivan, whether it's parked in the driveway or en route to grandma's house in Michigan, three states over, and it gets hail damage, according to this interpretation, there's no coverage under the homeowner's policy. Also keep in mind that many times one policy explicitly excludes something like this because it knows that it's probably covered under another policy, like maybe in an auto policy. But what if their cargo trailer was parked at their aunt's house in the next state temporarily, not attached to any vehicle, just sitting there at the side of the house? A cargo trailer is definitely personal property. So what does the policy say about that? As we see that it says anywhere in the world. So your little cargo trailer could be sitting on an island in the South Pacific and have a tree limb fall on it during a windstorm 
and it would be covered. I mean, that's what anywhere in the world means to me anyway. You know, you keep reading in the policy and you'll start to see that there's a $1,000 limit here for personal property, usually located at an insured's residence other than the resident's premises, unless it's being repaired. I mean, you could go for days with this stuff, but I'm gonna leave it at that for now. So can you see how easy it is to get burned by stuff in the policy if you don't have a full grasp of what's in there? Even on cat claims, which are pretty straightforward, there are plenty of little landmines in there that can make your day or week a freaking nightmare. Question of the day. Here's a policy question for you, and it's not a trick, I promise. Is there coverage for a pickup truck that the insured only uses to haul tools, landscaping, and gardening supplies around his property? The truck is not licensed to be used on public roads. Is it covered? For much more information about crushing it as an independent adjuster, head on over to adjustertv.com. And if you got value from this video, you can help me create more videos just like this by subscribing to Adjuster TV on YouTube. How does that even work? You wanna know. I wanna know. And so I looked and I found out. If you subscribe to Adjuster TV or any other channel on YouTube, what it tells the YouTube algorithm is that you like what you see on this channel. And so it will start showing more of my videos to other people who have a similar viewing pattern as you, which means that more people can get to see my videos. This helps me help you by building the community and helping me to keep Adjuster TV going. Wondering what to watch next? There are tons more videos right here on the Adjuster TV YouTube channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.